today we are here with two of my friends. We're going to have an opportunity to sit down and have a little lesson. My name is Sister Monica Painter. I will be finishing my mission in four weeks. I'm here in Thailand. This is Uwon. It's kind of out in the middle of our field. And today I have two of my friends. And so, hey, can you guys <laughs> introduce yourself, please? Hey, I'm Kate. <laughs> I'm Jade. Okay, and where are you guys from? I'm from Salt Lake. Okay. From Ogden, Utah. So what are you doing in Thailand? I'm on vacation. He's on vacation. And I'm teaching English, teaching English for a while. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Jade's mom is actually a Thai as well, so kind of cool. Um, today, something that I just really want to talk about, it's something that I've learned on my mission a lot. It was like one of the most profound lessons that I learned. And it, it's something that anybody can learn. Like, it's probably why we teach everybody this lesson first. It's the restoration. It's about Joseph Smith. It's about prophets, right? And so the question that I wanted to bring up today is, which is it, and how shall I know it? So like, both of you are here in Thailand for like very different reasons, for sure. And like, there's been big decisions in your life, I'm sure. Like, Sister Kate, what are you doing here? How did you get here? I, well, first of all, serving a mission here and then coming, going home, I just really knew that I needed to come back. I just mm -hmm. had a really strong feeling that I needed to come here and visit at least. And then when I was here, my life totally changed in a direction I never thought it would, like mm -hmm. meeting someone that I'm gonna marry and teaching English, so. Mm -hmm. But I did have a really strong feeling that I needed to come back, so. Yeah, yeah. and so you, do you feel like that was the way that God communicated with you then? Definitely. Like that and I don't feel like that very often on other things, but with this specific thing and for um, knowing that I wanted to be a missionary, those two things I probably felt the strongest about, that I knew I needed to do it. Mm -hmm. Other things I felt like, oh, I'm not sure, but those things I knew for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that so much. God really communicates with us in different ways. I'm sure you've noticed that as well. Um, God is our Holy Father. He's our dad. He loves us. And he's so invested in us. And one of the best examples I can think of of investment in a son is Joseph Smith. He was just 14 years old. And he had a question. He was, which is it and how shall I know it? I'm sure before you were a missionary, you had that question, mm -hmm. which is it? How shall I know it? Like, am I supposed to be a missionary? Did you feel like that? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And for Jay, right now, how old are you? I'm 17. 17. So, your decision of being a missionary, what do you think? Well, before I was actually planning on going inactive as soon as I was 18. And just because of things that have passed, happened in my life with uh, a group of my friends all passing away. And so I was planning on just going inactive. And then I had a friend and he said, are you going on a mission? I said, I don't know. He said, all right, that's cool, I'm going. So, I told him, if you go, I th I'll think about going. And then I came here to Thailand because of the missionaries and their strong testimony. And I basically, it's like changed my decision and I'm deciding I'm going on a mission. That is the coolest thing I've actually ever seen. That is so amazing. I watched wow. him here. I remember the first day I met you and I just thought, that's a cool guy. But I watched him work with the missionaries and it's just like, so cool. That's awesome. Today he bore his testimony in Thai for the first time ever. Very cool. Okay. I love that. So, for Jay, I'm sure you've experienced this, what we're going to talk about today. Then. Um, for me, being a missionary, using Preach My Gospel has been so important. And we can use it even as just members. It has so much that you can just apply. And so today I wanted to take a little quote from a section called Asking Questions. Because like, that's what we do as missionaries. We ask questions. We try and figure out investigators' needs. Sometimes as a member, you have to like figure out your own needs or your own questions. And so on page 183 in Preach My Gospel, thanks. Here's yours. All the way over there, <laughs> sorry. Um, I love this so much. It says, Jesus Christ often asks questions to help people ponder and apply principles. His questions prompted thought, soul searching, and commitment. And so today, this is what I want to talk about. There's three steps 
and coming to a decision with yourself. There's the thought. Hey, my friend's going on a mission, and he brought up this idea like, are you going to, right? For Kate, it's like, I'm 21 now, do I go on a mission or not? Yeah. Yeah, so here's the big thought. When you like come to that point, where what's the next step? Like, which is it, how should I know it? I love that so much. Okay, so then the second thing, what was it? Thought, then what happens? Do you remember? Action? Close. Um, we do something. It definitely takes action. Prayer. Prayer. <laughs> Prayer is a good part of it. It's soul searching. Oh yeah, I soul searching. Prayer, for okay. sure. Search soul, soul searching. Soul searching. And then the last one. Do you remember? Doing it? Yeah, doing it. Doing committing. It. Committing okay. to what we're going to do. Just like you said, like, I decided. Like, I changed my mind. I, I'm on to it. I'm doing it. I love that. Okay, cool. So, we're going to compare all this to Joseph Smith's experience. So, we're going to bump up these descriptions here. An old quad. And Joseph Smith history. I love Joseph Smith history. It's something that I've noticed that everyone can relate to. They can just relate to the confusion and the chaos that comes with a question in your mind. And for Joseph Smith, someone who just was pondering, you know, which is our church, which is it? Like, this bothered him so much and he needed the answer. And so I wanted to um, read a little bit of what he did. So his first thought, right, we're going to read verse 10. In the midst of this war of wor words and tumult of opinions, I often said to myself, what is to be done? Who of all these parties are right? Or are, are they all wrong together? If any one of them be right, which is it? And how shall I know it? Okay. So the thought. That's pretty big. So what I want to talk about is the soul search. What did he do after that when he had this question? He went to the same Mm -hmm. He had some action, right? There's there's a lot of verses coming up right towards this where at times his mind was like greatly caught up in things and it was excited and the crying tumult was large. And so I love that he said he had serious reflection. So like when we want to receive revelation. What has it meant for you to receive revelation? What have you had to do in order to get that? You definitely have to know what you're asking or know what you want to receive, I think. And then once you have that question, like you were saying, you have to have that action and, and be willing to commit to the answer you get. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. 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 It's like you have to know where you're going with it. You have to try and align yourself, right, with what God wants you to do. Yeah, like you can't be doing something completely wrong or opposite and uh -huh. then expect to be mm -hmm. getting a different answer if you're not willing to change. That's huge. I love that. Being worthy to get the answer. Was Joseph Smith worthy? Oh, that's yeah. a way bad marker. That's okay. I don't know why I just threw it. That's okay. Here it is. Being worthy. Joseph Smith was absolutely worthy for that. His, his righteous desire was just right here. So I love that he went to different places as much as opportunity would allow, right? Yeah. He studied it out. It was a true study. Have you ever made like a pros and cons list? Have you ever done that like mentally? Yeah. I've written them down. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember before my mission, my bishop was like, this age change thing is pretty huge. Like, are you just running with the flood uh -huh. of like people that are excited about this? Or like, is this really the time for you? And I did a pros and cons list. And I noticed that my pros was like, mm, and my cons was like, me. And like, yeah. what could be it makes cons? sense. <laughs> Sometimes when we get revelation, like, it makes sense, and it feels good. I love that. So with him, what was the last step before that commitment to go into the sacred grove? Do you remember what he did? Like, what prompted him to go to the sacred grove in the first place? The scripture that he